Welcome to tonight's webinar, part of a series dedicated to bringing parents and families better information about higher education and better access to college admissions. I'm Jenny Umhofer, owner and founder of College. We are thrilled to welcome you tonight as we share our insights on the UC application and offer a few tips and tricks to help you present your best selves in this application. We will walk you through each section of the entire application and help you make the most of your time. So a couple of little housekeeping notes before we get started. First of all, this session is being recorded and we will send the recording out to all of you. So we encourage you to be present and not worry about madly scribbling down your notes and writing down everything we say. Our goal here is to reach as many people as possible and as many members of the community as possible with the information they need, the information that you need. Um, so please hit like if you're listening and streaming on YouTube and let us know if you're finding this useful and how we're doing. This is not a formal webinar, so I wanna encourage all of you to please feel free to pop in a question into the Q&A box as we go. If you don't know where the, the Q&A box is, you just roll your mouse over the bottom of the screen and you'll see there's a little box says, that says Q&A. Um, and so we will have time for questions at the end of the webinar. Um, and I wanna encourage you to ask your questions as they come up because I can guarantee you, if you have a question, someone else probably has the exact same question. So next slide. So just want to kind of go over a couple of um, top mistakes we notice that students make when they're filling out the application before we launch in. Um, after many, many years of working in admissions and then many, many years working on the private consulting side, um, students who maybe don't take enough time with their planning, they don't really have a roadmap. Um, so not enough planning, not enough time um, in advance can sometimes lead to crashes or to confusion and stress and being overwhelmed. So um, try to take time with the planning. The next uh, mistake we notice students making is they may not do enough research. So they might not know, um, you know what the school really is all about. And um, within our practice, we really focus on finding the best right fit colleges for students. So taking the time to do the research is going to set you up for success. And number three is, of course, that devil, that little devil that bites us all, the uh, procrastination bite. Um, <laughs> if you put this off, it is going to come back and get you because um, inevitably, if you wait to the last minute, um, like the, the final fourth mistake, if you want to pop that one open, um, is Oh, oh, no college guidance, um, that's a different one. But if you if you procrastinate on your essays and you procrastinate on this application, the likelihood of something going wrong last minute, let's say your Wi-Fi goes down, um, you, you, you may just miss the deadline. So don't procrastinate on your essays is the takeaway here. And then of course, no college guidance, maybe nobody helping you, nobody looking at your essays. Um, this is something that does require multiple eyes to really make sure that you present your best self so having a little bit of guidance, whether it's from your high school counselor, whether it's from a teacher, whether it's from your parent or, you know, someone like us, you know, we, we really believe in having a, 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 an extra set of eyes looking at all of your materials. So next slide. Great. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, that's great. And that was such a big, those are big no-nos. Those are things that people definitely have trouble with every single year. Um, so I want to kind of introduce us for any of you out there watching who don't know us yet, College is a private college admissions advisory group. We are essentially a team of experienced admissions professionals who work very closely with students and their families anywhere on their path to higher education. Our work helps students identify and apply to best fit colleges and also it ignites their deeper potential along the way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop a little bit of information. We want to encourage all of you to reach out to us. Um, so if you go into the chat box, if you don't know where the chat box is, it should be right at the bottom of your screen. Um, I'm going to pop in some information for you to reach out to us um, right now. Okay. 
the first step with us is always just a free phone call. So if you are interested and you want to discuss a little bit of information about your specific circumstances, you can follow the link that I put in just now. A little bit about who we are beyond what I just said. Um, we exercise a team approach, which is something that I haven't yet seen another company do. We bring together an admissions professional and an essay specialist, all overseen by somebody who is a demonstrated admissions expert um, to make sure that nothing is missed in your child's application or in your application. And as a result, 85% of our 2020 um, graduates actually were accepted into at least one of their top three choice schools. You can also see in the middle of our screen right here, we have some of our data um, when you work with us, this team approach, everything that we bring to the table really works. And the proof is in the numbers, right? So um, you take a school like USC, who has gotten progressively more competitive over the years and is now uh, most recently at an 11.4% percent admit rate. Um, and then you look at our track record with that same school and you can see our students are about a little bit less than four times as likely to get in. And that's not because we're doing anything um, so special. It's just that we're really bringing out everything that they have to offer and making sure that they take advantage of every single opportunity that they have and making sure that they're applying to schools that really are that you know best right college for them. Um, even at a Stanford, which is normally a, an impossible 5.1%, you can see that we make it a, a possibly attainable 18% when you work with us. All right, so I wanna tell you a little bit about our upcoming events. Um, I'm gonna pop a little bit more information into the chat box as we go. Um, but for any of you who don't know us, again, we have boot camps that we offer throughout the summer and into the fall. These boot camps are events that are for clients. They're included in all of our packages, um, all of our all-inclusive packages. And they're essentially essay boot camps. They're dedicated time for students to come in and work for a block of time with the support of an S one of our essay specialists right there. So essentially, often when students are working, they get so far and then they get stuck. They're not sure if what they've written is good. They're not sure where they should go next. They need a little bit of an edit. They need you know, a nudge saying, is this working? Is this not working? Um, and that's basically what we provide in the essay boot camps. And our students find, our clients find that they really get a lot done. Um, we have one more left. So for all of our clients, I recommend that you come. You know who you are. Um, and for anybody else, if you're feeling like you need that help, reach out to us. We do offer this on a, on a paid basis for people who are not our clients. So you can follow that contact link that I put in the um, chat box just a few minutes ago if you would like to look into signing up for that boot camp, for that single boot camp, if you are not one of our clients and you need help on your essays. Um, I'm also going to pop in the link to our college talks page, which basically is our, our live with college archives. For any of you who have been following us, we've been doing an amazing series with various admissions professionals um, across the country from you know, UCLA to Lehigh over in Pennsylvania to Pomona College, Claremont McKenna College, um, Colorado Boulder and more. Um, if unfortunately the, you've missed the boat if you haven't seen any of those live. Um, however, you haven't missed the boat in terms of the information because you can go visit our college talks page and you can see our archives if you're interested. So I'm gonna put that into the um, chat box right now. Give me one second. Okay, great. And you can view all of this there and see what's coming up next and sign up as well. Okay, great. Before we go any further, I really would like to get all of your thoughts. I want to know what you are thinking about right now. Um, this um, poll will help us make sure that we're giving you the information that you need. Um, so just give us, take a second to give us some feedback about what you are thinking about right now, what you're hoping to get out of tonight's webinar. I would also like to encourage if there's more that you're thinking about, um, you can see in the last one, we've got other, write your questions in the Q&A box. If you have a different question that we haven't put in, please go into the Q&A box. Basically what you do is you roll your mouse over the bottom of the screen. You'll see a little icon that says Q&A. Um, please, please, I see we've got at least two people who, um, who have a different question. Please take a moment to pop it into that box and we'll try to address it as we go.
All right, so I'm seeing a lot of you have voted. I'm seeing a lot of people are really wondering how UC admissions officers use the application to identify strong candidates. You know, what do they look for? Um, that's a fantastic question. We'll be sure to address that tonight. Um, I also see a lot of people wondering about the personal insight questions, wondering, you know, are there some personal insight topics that are better than others? Um, we'll try to touch on that a little bit as well about scores. People are wondering about the test optional movement and what materials you'll need in advance. Um, so this is great. And I see I've got a handful of people who have other questions. I see some of you have popped them into the Q&A box. Um, let's see the best order to complete the application. Okay. Um, including feedback from support, parents and counselor. Um, if, you can, if you can elaborate on that, that would be great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and we're going to continue on. Wonderful, thank you all for your, um, for your input. All right, so um, some of your questions are gonna be answered right off the bat um, as I go through UC um, news, pertinent news and updates. Um, so as I'm sure you are all aware, um, we have this huge movement towards test optional. Um, this is an interesting piece of news because it's definitely something that the UC, you may not know, the UC system had on the table as something that was a discussion that was already happening before the pandemic hit. Um, so the pandemic kind of um, allowed them to move forward more quickly than they might have. Um, and as you may know, right now also, there has been a recent ruling by a judge against the UC even looking at tests, you should know that you still do have the option to enter your test um, scores if you choose to. That has not yet been finalized. So um, don't think that just because that ruling has been passed that you can't submit your test for this year. As of right now, you absolutely can submit your tests. For 2021 applicants for next year, they're also planning on being test optional and beyond that, um, starting in 2022, the system is planning to go test blind for a period and then they'll see what happens after that. Um, regarding the AP tests, Obviously those have passed and they were online, they were shortened, they were 40 minutes, but the cogent piece of news here, if you don't know, is that most colleges, including the UC system, have committed to still using those AP scores to award credit as they would have in any other year. So I just want to reassure you that those test scores, you're still gonna get that college credit for. Um, minimum GPA suspension. So the UC system does have a minimum GPA requirement because of the movement towards pass no pass in certain schools. Um, the minimum GPA uh, requirement for the UC system has been suspended. So if you fall under that category of a student whose school or parent whose student's school has gone pass no pass, you needn't worry about the minimum GPA and how that's affected by pass no pass. And I think you'll find in general that schools are being very understanding in this climate. Virtual tours and experiences. This is one of the fantastic silver linings that has come up as a result of the pandemic. Um, the schools are as committed as you are to trying to find ways to get to the students um, when the students cannot get to them on campus in the traditional way. Um, so I really, really, no matter what school you are applying to, whether it's UC or other schools, that you can continue to do virtual tours um, for high school students who are seniors and juniors, um, go sign up for those virtual college visits. Those are invaluable. Um, definitely go onto the admissions pages and find all of the virtual tours that you can find. Virtual tours are being offered, yes, um, but there's also virtual student panels. There's also virtual info sessions. You'll also find that admissions officers are more willing than ever to actually meet with you individually on Zoom. So just reach out. And then regarding summer program cancellations, um, I mainly wanna say, don't worry. Schools are really aware of what's happening for students and they are being very flexible, very understanding. There may be, if there's a summer program that you got into that was really, really competitive, there's a place where you can, you can enter that into one of your activities. You can put that you were accepted to this competitive summer program and that it was canceled due to COVID-19. One of my students did that actually, um, and I think it's a great workaround. Um, for next summer, for my juniors and sophomores out there, I want to encourage you because so many programs have done 
done a great job of pivoting and have a great, have done a great job of, you know, offering something that is going to be uh, possibly virtual, but then also having an option for in-person. So definitely look and know that you have possibilities for this coming summer, even though a lot was canceled for this past summer. Great, thank you so much, Kelsey. Um, I can see that you have a lot of questions coming in the Q&A box. Thank you so much for your questions. It helps us really understand why you came to this uh, webinar and what you hope to get out of it. What I'm going to do is um, copy all your questions down and then we will leave time at the end to answer questions. And if I have a sec, while Kelsey is going through step-by-step -step each section of the application, I will respond to you myself. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, this, uh, this graph here we have. It is a, um, a graph that kind of shows the breakdown of how admissions decisions were made in the past. Um, and you can kind of see uh, pre-pandemic, you can kind of see that uh, there is a, a pretty big chunk uh, that is dedicated to transcript evaluation. 45% is what is a very broad brushstroke type of, um, uh, you know, uh, percentage that you can you can think about in the admissions process um, pre-pandemic. About 20% of the admissions decision was made based on test scores, and 20% made on essays, what the student chose to write about and submit in their essays. Um, a little bit on activities and involvement, about 8%, and it really varies. Obviously, all of these areas vary based on the college, but we wanted to kind of give you this as a framework, and especially for those of you who are younger um, or parents of younger students um, for future, future reference. Um, and then about 5% on letters of recommendation, not for the UCs, but for other schools that might require the letters of recommendation from your teachers or counselor. And then about 2% of the decision might be made on demonstrated interest, which is more and more how colleges, especially on the private side, are um, factoring in whether or not you'll actually come if they admit you. Um, so, so that's just sort of a general breakdown of admissions and how admissions might have worked before. So the next slide shows how admissions decisions might be made in this year, <laughs> given what we're facing and given um, you know, COVID-19's effect on the college admissions process. So again, these are just really broad brushstroke sort of um, predictions that are completely subjective in some ways, but in, in some ways not because of our admissions expertise and our backgrounds. Um, we're thinking that the, um, the transcript, the actual transcript is going to weigh more heavily in the admissions process because that is the hard piece of evidence of how you perform in the classroom and your academic performance is you know, a, a major piece of, you know, of whether they think that you're a good fit. Um, so about 50% inched up a little bit and way down with the test scores, 6% um, in a general sense. Um, about 25%, so more emphasis placed on the essays. And then um, pretty much the same in terms of extracurricular activity involvement. Like Kelsey was saying earlier, you know, the colleges do realize that, you know, you're, you're facing very different uh, situation with your activities and your involvement extracurricularly. Even summer programs were canceled, so, um, so they're going to be very understanding. But about 8% would be in that area, 7% letters of recommendation, maybe a little bit more on that, on that end, and then um, demonstrated interest um, for the private schools might go up just a little bit more. And then we also wanted to give you some helpful links as you start to get ready to fill out the UC application. Um, these are essentially um, links that will guide you to valuable resources that the UC provides. There's the freshman application guide, which is, I think it's um, 50 pages of uh, insight and information on all sorts of um, campus specific programs and transfer admissions. And it's actually it's freshman application guide. So it's not the transfer, um, but, uh, but it's, it's pretty much everything you could possibly imagine. And that we just attached to an, uh, a, a document that should be sent to have been sent out to you already. So check your inbox on that one. Um, the personal insight questions. So those are the actual questions that you have eight to um, choose from and you pick four. And then what you need to know before you apply, sort of how to get organized, um, filling out the application quick tips, 
And then the UC San Diego seven colleges. So many of you may have questions about, you know, how to prioritize those seven colleges when you're filling out the application. Um, it does ask you to put them in rank order um, from one through seven. So it's it's helpful before you sit down to fill out the application to go ahead and learn about the seven different colleges and um, so that you can kind of have those rank order ready before you start. Um, the other thing we thought would be helpful for you to have, uh, as this is just going to be an hour long presentation tonight, um, and you'll go away, you'll start working on your applications, and you'll be thinking about, you know, the different UC campuses. And like Kelsey said earlier, it's vital that you get as much information as possible about these different campuses, because they're not all the same. Even though there's one application, each UC campus has the, its own personality. So they have really done an amazing job, each campus at pivoting and offering you the public some uh, some videos and some in info sessions. And the nice thing is you don't have to actually drive to campus. <laughs> you can actually do it from home. And so there are um, several valuable um, links that we put in that that document for you as well. So please take advantage of those online offerings. Okay, and then finally, we also gave you a checklist. Um, and we really believe in organization at college. So we, we like to empower our students with as much structure and um, organization, you know, time management as possible because we know there's, there's only so much time to get things done. Um, so before you begin, there's, um, there's, you know, a couple of key points you wanna have handy. Um, you, you definitely want to have your transcript. And for those of you who don't know where your transcript is, this is the time to grab it. <laughs> Ask your counselor at your high school. You want to have it printed out and right next to you or at least on your desktop, um, on your computer when you're filling out the application because you're going to have to put in your courses exactly as, they're, um, as they are on your transcript. You want to have a recent updated list of activities or resume handy because that's where you're going to get all of your um, your text and your you know information to put into the uh, different extracurricular activities for the UC application. Um, I would recommend also you review uh, these activities now carefully and think about if there's more leadership or more things that you've done to add that to your document before you sit down and, and work on your application. Um, and, you know, create sort of a Google Doc or a, a Word Doc or some other document that you can cut and paste over. Um, and then I would also recommend that you have your test scores. If you have taken the test, if for some reason you were able to take a real test and you're a senior and you're applying this year, um, then to have those ready, th those handy as well. If you haven't or, you know, and, and your AP test, subject test, if you've taken those, have those handy and ready to go. If you haven't, then you don't, you don't need to worry about it. Um, and then, of course, you want to have your essays ready to go. So spending time, really good time on developing your essays, writing the from the authentic voice, um, you know, all of those stories that make up who you are, your strengths and your skills and, um, you know, everything about you that you think would be relevant for the colleges to know, the UC system to know, those um, essays should be, should be handy and ready to go. And then finally have your parents' information handy. A lot of students don't know where their parents went to college or maybe um, you know, what their profession is, their te the technical you know, title. So you know, having those um, pieces of information about your, your, your parents um, and the co their contact information, household income is optional, but that might be helpful to, to just know so you can put that in. Um, so these are, these are essentially all the things that we recommend you gather before you sit down. And then these are the sections that you'll have. It's essentially about you, all your you know, address and things, uh, campuses and majors, um, and academic history and additional information essay. There's a little box that you can fill it and Kelsey's gonna show you as she walks through um, for the academic history. That's gonna take you some time. And then test scores, of course, if you have them, um, activities and awards, and then um, your scholarships and programs that you might be want to be considered for, and then personal insight essays and additional comments essay. So it, it really does take some time. Kelsey's going to talk a little bit about the timing and what to budget for in terms of um, your time frame. But this is just a helpful checklist to get you started. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much, Jenny. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause my share for a second.
Um, and I'm going to make a new share so that I can show you my account of this, um, the UC application. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Great. Um, so the first thing, a couple of things before we dive into this. Um, I want to just clarify, we are not working for the University of California. Rather, this is a walkthrough of the application that's been informed by our experiences of years of experiences being independent counselors. Um, this is kind of what we might do for one of our students. We want to give this to all of you. Um, and a quick note, we're not going to be talking about transfer applications tonight. So if that's something that you're really interested in hearing about, I highly recommend that you reach out to us on that contact link that I sent earlier in the chat box. Um, and we would be more than happy to discuss your specific situation there. Um, so we're gonna do a nice, we're gonna take a walk together through the application, um, but this is not, it, we're not gonna go through every single, we're not gonna click every single box with you because that would take way too long. Um, but I do wanna tell you, you know, if you're gonna sit down, you, before you start, you wanna make sure you have everything you need. You have your social security card if you're looking for um, federal aid. You wanna make sure you have all of your parent information. You wanna make sure you have those transcripts. That's definitely huge. Um, and you wanna plan that everything all together is going to take you about three hours to get through. Now, you do not have to do it all in one chunk, so you can take a breath. Um, but if you want to do it all in one chunk, definitely have some water, have some snacks ready, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you a little bit of time. You want to settle in. Okay, so um, there's one fantastic thing um, that I just want to bring your attention to. In the personal insight section, you actually have the option to have them email you the personal insight questions in advance. Um, so that is something that you'll find here. We'll, we'll go through it at the end. But as Jenny said, you want to have your personal insight answers really ready to go um, when you're going to submit pop them in. And my trick, my pro trick for you is to write them in a Google Doc or a Word Doc so that you have them. They're editable. You can read the entire thing. You're not confined by a box. And then if you use Google Docs, you'll be able to go through the history and you can revert to a previous. Sometimes students get over edited and they start to lose themselves in their essays. So you can go back into the history in Google Docs and you can revert to a previous essay. If you do that directly into the UC application, you're going to lose any previous work that you had there already. So that's one little just pro trick, pro trick for you. Pro trick for you. Another thing I want to let you know is that the UC um, system here for your application does have a 20 minute inactivity sign out automatically. So you want to make sure that as you go, you actually are hitting um, save and continue. So I'm going to hit edit on this. We're going to talk about my background a little bit. Oh, look, it signed me out. What a surprise. So we're going to go ahead and sign me back in. Um, okay. All right. Um, so that is just, that's the big message here is that you want to make sure that you're hitting save and continue after everything that you do. Okay. So in the about you section, um, they're going to ask you a whole bunch of information. So you can see my fake account is um, with Elizabeth. Ellie here um, has entered all of her information. And one thing that is really great, I just want to bring your attention to it, is that as you enter this information and you hit save and continue and you move through all of these many, many boxes about your phone number, all your particular information, at the end of each section, it's going to give you a moment to preview. So you'll be able to see it, how it's going to appear to the admissions officers and make sure that you read through and that everything looks correct. A quick note about demographics. They want to um, gather as much information as they can about you. What admissions officers are doing with holistic review is they are trying to paint a picture of who you are as a student and what context you come from. So all of this information about demographics in terms of your ethnic background, in terms of your parent information, your household information, that is merely used for them to try to better understand you as a student and you as a person. This is not information that is going to affect your admissions 
chances in any way. So you can fill out as much or as little as you feel comfortable with when it comes to the demographic section. Um, so I'm gonna just click through this quickly. Um, this is just gonna give you an idea of what they need. They need that parent income, how many people are living in your house. Um, none of this is hard. I want to encourage all of you. This application is actually, it's kind of interesting. I really enjoyed filling it out personally, um, but it's, it's not hard. It's just a little time consuming and it's just a little bit kind of specific. You gotta make sure that you have all the right information as you're going. So I'm gonna just keep, keep hitting save and continue, being very mindful of that 20 minute logout um, cut off to make sure that I have everything saved. And this is that preview I was talking about. So as you finish an entire section, it's gonna have you review it. And I definitely recommend that you review it and you, see, you will be able to catch things like, you know, oh no, I actually live at 1235 Main Street, um, things like that. You'll be able to catch it as you go. And one thing that's great about this, they've worked really hard this year in their revisions to make it a little bit more flexible and a little bit more user-friendly. So if you have um, this, like you notice there's an error exactly here, you don't have to go all the way back. You can just hit edit right here and it will take you right to that section that you'd like to edit. Okay. So I'm gonna go into campuses and majors. First, it's going to ask you to acknowledge community principles, um, aligning yourself with UC commitments to an anti-racist uh, environment. And then it's gonna ask you to fill out term or level. Make sure that you are filling out freshmen, that you're currently in high school, or that you've graduated, but you haven't done any college or university credit. This is actually important. Uh, another little pro trick, when you get into the majors section, you may see like if you accidentally click transfer, you may get there and see that there's almost no majors there, that they're all locked for you. If you do have that happen in the majors section, you want to come back here and just double check that you have marked freshman and not transfer or other, which may have blocked out some of those majors. Okay, so now we're gonna get to this beautiful graphic of the state of California and the rough location of all of the schools. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna see, I've got UC Davis, I've got Merced. Um, these schools on this application, you do not have to do any additional um, supplemental writing or anything like that to apply to more schools. Um, sometimes there are special programs that require supplemental applications, things like that. Um, but each school does cost $70 to apply to it. Um, so here on this page, it'll show you right here what your estimated cost is based on this. And another little trick, if you have gone in in the personal information and you have marked yourself as wanting to apply for a fee waiver, you've entered in you know, your parents' income level and how many people live in your house, whether or not you get that fee waiver is actually gonna pop up right here. So it will update your cost based on what you've already entered in the about you section. So I definitely recommend in terms of order, and I know somebody asked about the best order to fill this out. Honestly, for the most part, I would go in order, at least between about you and campuses and majors, because they will use the information that you're putting in as kind of skip logic to inform the next page and what they're gonna ask you in the next set of questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a school here um, because then it's gonna ask me to do majors and I can show you guys what that looks like. So I've got Davis, Merced, Santa Cruz. Now my cost is up to $490. I'm gonna hit save and continue. All right, so on this page, you can see my schools that I already had selected have all of the majors for Ellie. You have her majoring uh, undeclared humanities at Davis. She's majoring in Asian American studies at UCLA, in critical race and ethnic studies at Merced. But you can see the two um, schools that I've just added for her don't have majors yet. I just wanna show you how that goes. Um, so I'm gonna hit choose major, great. And because I know Ellie is interested in Asian American studies, I'm gonna go into the College of Humanities, Arts and Sciences, and I can see right here, I've got Asian studies and Asian American studies. I'm gonna choose this as her major. Now you also have the option to choose an alternate major. Um, if you choose an alternate major, basically what that means is if for some reason you are not accepted into your first choice major, the school will consider you for this alternate major. 
So although it's a possibility to add an alternate major, you definitely want to make sure that it's something you would want to study um, because you may end up slotted into that major if you don't get into your major. So you don't want to just choose something random. Um, here is where I was talking about the closed majors. Um, if you went to this page and you saw that there was almost nothing offered, that might be an indication that you put the wrong level of applicant. You might've put transfer by accident. You can always click on show closed majors. And if there's a ton that then pops up, that's a pretty surefire. You can see now there's not a lot that popped up. Um, it's a surefire indicator that you actually maybe entered the wrong thing earlier on. I'm gonna hit save and continue. Okay, and then you can also see here that whereas uh, Riverside had a number of different um, major kind of headers, UC Santa Cruz only has three. So this does vary from school to school. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Ellie's major here. We're gonna just go down, um, we're gonna choose feminist studies for her here. And I'm going to scroll all the way down and hit save and continue. And now we should be great. You do have to choose a major, but you can choose undeclared as a major. And then right here, the UC Santa, uh, San Diego College ranking. Um, this is something that is included in your useful UC application tips, um, not tips, um, links handout that you should have gotten an email with a link to it. So if you haven't gotten that email, definitely check your inbox. You should have gotten an email right before we started tonight. And that'll include a link to download these two incredibly useful, the checklist and then the links to apply. So um, basically at the UC San Diego, they have all of these colleges. These colleges are not dictated by major, but rather they're like housing communities where students live. So you wanna go and do a little bit of research, a little bit of reading up on that link that we sent you to see what the different um, personalities of these different schools are. Um, and you can order them by just changing these little arrows. So I can move um, the Ravel College up a little bit and I can move John Muir down simply by checking clicking on these up and down boxes. Now this looks like a better order for me. So I'm gonna hit save and continue. Okay, great. And then you can see a review here. Um, I have a question that I'm seeing right now that's pretty relevant to this. Is it bad to choose undeclared major for certain UC schools? Um, well, one thing I wanna share with you is that the undeclared major is pretty common. Um, so I wouldn't say it's bad, but what I will say about that is we're talking about going back to holistic review and context. Um, you want to give uh, admissions officers as much as much context as you can give them to understand your background. So if you've taken all of these, um, for example, a bunch of STEM AP classes, and then you say like, oh, I'm going to major in um, I don't know, chemical engineering, they're going to say, oh, that makes a lot of sense. The student is really interested. We see that interest demonstrated already. So if you have a sense of it, you usually can change your major with some ease, but you would give them a little bit more context by, um, by declaring a major. Okay, so this all looks good. I'm going to continue to academic history. Academic history is definitely one of the trickiest um, not trickiest, but most time consuming parts of the application, you definitely want to make sure that you have your transcript in front of you. I'm going to click through this one because um, I just want to show you a couple of things. We're going to start with seventh and eighth grade. Um, the only thing that you need to know about seventh and eighth grade is whether the student has taken a high school level math class or a high school level language class. You can see Ellie here took algebra one and she took geometry in, um, in seventh and eighth grade. And then you can see that she did not take any courses other than English in seventh or eighth grade. So we just clicked no and that she did not attend school outside of the United States for any part of sixth to eighth grade. You can add another course by just hitting this plus part button um, and adding whatever this math course is, delete that, and the same thing goes for a language. So that's really the only thing that you need to know here about seventh and eighth grade. Um, I'm going to whiz through a bit of this part. Um, you can see they're going to ask you about your high school. The one thing I want to say about this is that um, 
you just need to know the name of your high school. You do not need to know the school code. If you know the school code for some reason and you choose to search that way, then that's fantastic. You can do that, but you can just search for the name of your high school and then choose it when it pops up and it will automatically populate with the code. Um, it'll ask you other questions like, you know, how do they grade? Is it a zero to 100 or is it ABCDF? Is it semester or trimester? Things like that. Um, and you'll just go through, that'll all be very clear on your transcript. I just want to, um, yeah, I just want to, I'm sorry, jump in for a second. There was a question that came in the chat box about how counselors review, um, admissions officers review the um, undeclared, if they're, if they're checking undeclared as a major, whether that would be viewed negatively. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to take that answer? Sure. Um, so as I was saying before, I wouldn't say that it is viewed negatively, um, because I think in general admissions officers, it's very, very common. Often schools will joke that their most popular major is undeclared. Um, but I think so. I think it's not so much a negative as a question of context. And if you are a student who thinks that you have an idea of what you would like to study, it really is better to put that in because it helps the admissions officers better understand everything else in your application packet. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that I finished adding high schools for now um, and everything here. So uh, we're gonna zoom forward into 12th grade um, because it's really the same for every single year. Oh, except, yeah, we'll go to 12th grade. Actually, I'm gonna go back to high school because I wanna show you something. Excuse me for my jumping around. I'm gonna hit edit and I wanna just show you this. Um, first, you're gonna need to add what grades you attended this high school for. And then you're going to need to check these boxes if you took summer school courses. Now, this is um, a touch confusing because usually we think of summer school courses as happening the year before, but in the UC application, they want you to indicate when you took summer courses after this grade. So you're going to go ahead and check where applicable. You can see that Ellie only took summer courses after ninth grade, um, and then that is going to allow the system to know to give you the boxes to fill out those summer school courses. Um, if you don't check them, then you will not have anywhere to enter those. So make sure that you check these boxes if you took summer school courses. Okay, so now we're going to go forward into 12th grade and I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. I'm going to hit edit on this. Okay, so first of all, um, you've got your honors codes here. You've got your advanced placement classes, those you all know about. You've got your HL, which is honors level, the UC approved honors levels. And one quick little note to know is that not all honors classes or classes that are marked as honors through your school are necessarily going to be marked as UC approved honors levels. And I'll show you that uh, what that looks like in just a second. IB, so that's an international baccalaureate. That's something that mostly applies to international schools. It's not widely used um, here. And then not honors is just for regular classes. Um, then you also have in progress for classes in 12th grade um, and then no courses in this term. So you can see here in the 12th grade year, we have um, AP government and politics. And I wanna tell you what's really great is that it actually automatically populates, it knows that you're in 12th grade right now and you don't have grades yet. So you can see here, if I just click any box in here, it's gonna add in progress for grade one and planned for grade two because it knows that we're not in second semester yet. Now, again, you can see a little bit about these courses. You can see that this AP government and politics course is indeed in marked as an AP, but you can see, for example, U.S. History 1-2, marked as honors, does qualify for honors level, whereas World History 1-2, which is also marked as honors through the high school, through South Pasadena High School, is marked as not honors. So don't be thrown off by this. Definitely just go from your transcript as directly as you can to the title of the course that's indicated on the UC application. Um, we just had a question come in, Kelsey, about um, someone wants to know how to indicate that they took a summer class at a local community, community college and not at the high school. That is a wonderful question. Um, and it's actually something I'm gonna get to in a second. You can see right underneath where we are, it says colleges attended in high school and college courses attended in high school. So a little um, thing about that, whether or not it is dual enrollment or a summer program, you're going to add it in through here. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that is because at some schools, 
you have the option for dual enrollment and those grades actually show up on your transcript. You do still need to enter that you um, that you attended a college in high school for it to really show to its fullest extent. Um, yeah, so that that's how I would address that one. Um, I'm going to actually go backwards for a second. I'm going to hit my save and continue. I'm going to go backwards into 11th so that we can see what it will look like when grades are populated. Okay, so you can see the same thing happens, but in this case, it'll populate with this little two dash line, and then you can enter your grade in for semester one and semester two. And again, I want to just emphasize that you, um, you do need to make sure that these courses are all entered in as closely to your transcript as possible. Now, what if I don't see my courses? You can see right down here at the bottom of every single year, there is this little box that says, I don't see my courses. You can go ahead and add it. You need to choose the subject area, um, which brings me to how these are categorized. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but you can see here when you go to enter your grades, it's categorized according to the UC systems classification of categories, the A through Gs, where A is history, B is English, C is mathematics, and so on. Um, Basically, according to the UCs, you have to, in order to meet minimum admissions requirements, you have to complete 15 year-long high school courses with a grade of C or better, and that these need to be uh, approved A through G courses. Now, um, you can satisfy those requirements through other ways, but one of the things that you also need to know is that if you're a younger student, they kind of look at how many A through Gs you have, um, and not just did you meet the minimum requirement, but they also look at, oh, wow, this person really went above and beyond in taking A through Gs. That makes them even more exciting as a student. Um, so you can see that they're all categorized. Um, another little tip I have for you, if you don't see your course categorized where you think it might be, definitely take a look in the 11th grade or in the college prep elective sections. So you can see here, Ellie actually took this class called Virtual Enterprise. Um, you might think that that could be in one of the sciences because it is a little bit um, computer science-y or that it might even be in somewhere like history or social science. If you don't find it, definitely check the college prep electives because you can see there's a wide variety. We've got macroeconomics and we've got creative writing, we've got economics. So these might be things that you would think are in some of the other A through G um, uh, categories but are not. So just double check this before you go to enter in any other um, any other courses. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do for you right now is I'm going to pop a link into the um, into the chat box and this link is going to be a link to the A through G requirements um, explanation and all of the different categories for you so you can take a look. Um, so what I'm seeing to talk a little bit about how admissions officers look at the transcript, you can see, okay, great. I, I see in 11th grade that Ellie took some, a pretty rigorous, um, schedule of courses. I see she's got four APs here. She's got honors math three. That looks fantastic. And then when they look in 12th grade, they want to see that you have kept up that lo level of rigor. I see she's got a few fewer courses, but she's got three different APs and she's got honor chem honors chemistry and she's got this virtual enterprise course going strong. She's done for a few years. So that looks pretty good. Um, another little trick is that as you are applying, um, part of their offer is going to be based on what they see that you're planning to do. So if you make any major changes, that can be a reason for them to rescind an offer. So you wanna make sure that you're really careful about that. If something happens at your school and one of your major classes is no longer offered and you have to make a change, you wanna proactively reach out to your schools and let them know, hey, um, there was this change and here's why it's gonna look different. Um, it's not because I randomly got lazy and just dropped my course. Um, that's basically what they're concerned about. Mm, okay, so um, this kind of addresses the college's question. If you attended college while you're in high school, whether it was during the summer or whether it was um, co-curricularly as dual enrollment, you're gonna hit add college. Ellie doesn't have colleges to add, but if you add college, then you'll end up again, this, these wonderful skip logic forms 
I don't have to click no again if I haven't attended any college courses, but if you have, it'll then give you new boxes to populate with the information that's relevant. Okay, so Ellie doesn't have any colleges to add. Um, I'm going to continue on. Okay, um, so the next thing is the additional comments section. First of all, they're gonna ask you for your um, California State Student ID number. So make sure that you have that as well. That is typically on your high school transcript. So you'll have your transcript here, so you should already have it. Um, but if you need help finding it, you can't find it, reach out to your high school counselor because every transcript has a slightly different layout. They're definitely gonna be the person to answer that question. Now, regarding the additional comment section, this is really a place for you to explain things that maybe went a little bit wrong. Um, it could be a time for you to explain some grades that weren't where they should have been, or to explain a really difficult situation that you went through in high school that maybe even wasn't reflected in your transcript in your grades. Maybe you kept your grades really high, but that's information for them to know. Um, maybe it's about a learning difference. That's really valuable for them to know. So all of that is what is what the additional comment section is for. If you are a person who um, had a really uh, above and beyond difficult hardship as a result of COVID-19, this is where you would put that as well. The common application, if you've been working on that, has a specific COVID-19 section, but in the UC application, you'll wanna use the additional comments for that. Um, I see a couple of questions coming through um, about online classes. Online classes would also be populated here. You would add it as an additional high school or college. Um, and yeah. Okay. I just, I just want to pipe up and say I'm seeing a lot of questions coming in. I'm so happy to hear that you are engaged um, with this application because it is actually quite complicated and it takes a lot of time and intention and it's not necessarily um, as logical <laughs> uh, when you start filling it out and you have all your materials as you would think. So I, I highly recommend that you take advantage of the um, online offerings through each campus. So many of your questions I notice are a little bit specific to your individual situation and the individual campuses that you're applying to. And so not knowing you or being out of context, is it's hard to answer and advise. Um, but either one, I would reach out to us offline if it's more individual. And number two is I would recommend that you spend a lot of time, you know, going through these links that we gave you to engage with the campuses directly, because some of the answers to the questions are going to be found at the individual campuses. Um, hopefully that's Great. helpful. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. Um, I see a couple of other questions. Um, again, as Jenny said, please reach out to them if they're really specific. Um, but I do see um, asking about including every single class, including things like art, or are they just core classes? And I think that's a really good question. Um, you'll see if we go back actually, into this section, into 11th grade, you do also have just, a section. Um, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. You do have a section, I'm gonna just minimize all of these, um, where you can talk about visual and performing arts. The only real thing that doesn't go in here is um, physical education and sports. And those there's another place for those to go in. There was a really good question that just came in also about, it, you know, when is the earliest that that you can submit an application. Um, the earliest is November 1st. So the application is available now to fill out. So I would recommend in October, you, you spend some time looking at it, familiarizing yourself with all of these sections that we're going through. Feel free to look at the recording again. Um, but if you're ready to submit, you can submit November 1. And I'm sure they'd be happy to get your application on November 1 because they'll be getting a whole lot in their system towards the end of the month. And in fact, um, it does happen that it crashes because there's so many applications. So I would recommend you try to submit at least a day in advance of November 30th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to move forward to call uh, to additional information. We did that and we're going to get to our review section. So once again, I can't emphasize enough. You will save yourself time later if you take the time to review these sections as you go. So re-review this with your transcript in front of you. Make sure that you've gotten all the names in correctly. Don't worry too much about these honors codes because that is pretty specific to, um, to the UC. And remember that the UC knows whatever your school has reported to it. So you can go ahead and have everything here. It should be 
really, really easy for you. We're going to continue to test scores um, because I know that testing is a big question um, and I really appreciate everybody bearing with us. I know that with all of the questions we've been trying to answer, um, we're likely running a little bit behind. So I want to encourage everybody to just stick with us. Um, we're going to get through this and so will you independently. Um, Okay, so I'm going to go to the test score section and because of all of the stuff that's happening with COVID-19, unfortunately, Ellie had her SAT canceled three different times and then finally College Board sent back her refund and so she wasn't able to take the test. So I'm, I'm she has no clicked here uh, because she doesn't have any test scores to report. And if you are in that situation, like so many people, I really want to encourage you not to worry. We've been talking to so many admissions officers. We actually spoke to the uh, director of undergraduate admissions from UCLA, which is the school that gets the most applications, not just in the UC system, but in the entire country. Uh, we really are astounded at how they read all of them. Um, but they, Gary Clark said, you know, we don't want you risking your health to go and take this test. This is not something that was ever going to make or break your application. It was just extra information. And now that's even more true. So I really want you all to take that to heart. Give yourself the space to not worry about trying to shove one more test in. We're pretty much out of time anyway. Um, and don't worry about it. If you were lucky enough to be able to take a test and you were happy with your score, then you would just go into here, you'd click yes, and then you'd hit add test information. Okay, so you want to have the month, the year, your ID number, which should be on your score report. And then you have to have your composite English, math, reading and science here. Now I'm going to show you something really cool that this application does. Um, you can see that I have added my SACT, but I haven't entered anything. This is automatically going to give you an orange bar to make sure you know that this page is not complete. So this is very, very useful, but it also gives you the option to skip the page for now. So we'll save anything, like let's say you entered in your score because you remember your composite, but you don't actually have your score report in front of you. You don't really remember, okay, I remember the date. It was in May, let's say, of 2020, um, but I don't remember the score breakdown. That's okay, you can hit save and continue and then skip this page for now and you're fine, all right? Um, so this is a really great application, gives you the freedom to stop and start if you choose to. So we're gonna go ahead and continue, skip this page for now, that's fine. Um, save and continue, okay. Um, you can see here that Ellie was able to take the 40 minute AP exam this year. She did quite well. Um, she has the physics, so she's gonna go ahead and report all of these AP tests because she was able to take those. IB scores, if you don't know what this is, um, then it probably doesn't apply to you. It's a particular type of curriculum more commonly used internationally. So IB scores, probably no. I'm gonna hit save and continue. TOEFL and IELTS, these are for um, students who have studied mainly out of the country or in mainly foreign language programs. So if you have this as a requirement, probably you have had less than two years of instruction in English in the classroom. Um, and you will be required to submit a TOEFL or an IELTS. Um, Ellie doesn't, so we're gonna hit save and continue. Save and continue. And you'll see we've got a review, everything looks good. Um, and we're gonna continue to activities and awards. This is another really important piece. You can see here, one new thing on the UC application is that they actually used to limit you um, by category, where you used to only be able to put I think up to five of any particular category. So you can only have five volunteer things and you can only have five work experience things. Um, they have changed it actually quite a lot to have no cap on any of the categories. Now, um, I wanna make a plug for really being as robust as possible in the activities section. Um, you have, so Ellie here, you can see she took some other coursework, Varsity Virtual Business, and you can see her role here. There is opportunities to put this other coursework in here. Um, this is anything that doesn't qualify as an A through G, but is something that you did take a class in. It could be a class that you didn't get credit in. Um, now, I just wanna show you something about this. All right, so you can see when we go into this activity, we have the category first. You have a bunch of different categories, award or honor, we've got other coursework, volunteer, et cetera. Now, 
your category, again, is going to dictate the fields it gives you to fill out. So for other coursework, you can see all we have is the name, and then we have a little description of the course. This can be something taken directly off the syllabus or off of a website. You can see when you took it and about the hours. This is another thing. I would highly recommend that you create your activities list in a Google document or in a regular Word document, in something outside of the application, and think about how much time you spent. This is an average, so it's okay for it to be an estimation. You don't need to worry about it being exact. They're not going to hunt you down if it is incorrect. And it's okay to round, uh, to err on the side of a little bit too much. Um, don't inflate what you did, but if you're not really sure if you spent four and a half or five hours a week, you can go ahead and put five hours a week and that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and hit, we're gonna hit save and continue. And I'm gonna show you a different type of box. So for volunteer and community service, very different. You can say, this is the name of the program. The program. And you can say, first they ask you, they give you, um, I believe 300 characters or 250 characters to give them an idea of just the organization. What kind of work do they do? Again, this can be taken directly off of a website if that's applicable. And then the second one, you have, what did you do? And you have quite a lot of space here. Um, you can see actually that you have 350 characters. So that's you know a good amount of space for probably four, five, even six sentences. Um, contrasted with the common app, the common application is actually 150 characters. So you actually have a lot of space here. And in the UC application, it's perfectly fine to use I statements to expand. They wanna know if you've held leadership, definitely front load with leadership. Um, and talk a little bit, if you have space, about, about what you learned about the significance of it. Um, you can put in when you volunteered, again, hours per week, weeks spent per year, and hit save and continue. Um, that is just a quick walkthrough of this, but the thing I wanna tell you about the activities section is I would say that overall, by and large, um, as a reader, the activities section is kind of one of the most underutilized sections in any application. So you wanna really take the time to develop those, those descriptions, those little activities blurbs, and make sure that it is as full as it possibly can be, because not only does it give the information they need about what you were doing and why you were involved, but it also shows them something. If you put a three word answer, it's gonna give the message that it's not something that was that important to you. If you put a fuller description, they're gonna really get to see a picture. And again, with a holistic review, you wanna give them as much information about you as you possibly can. Okay, so I finished adding activities here. I have a chance to review it. I think that these descriptions are okay. They could maybe be a little bit longer, but for now they're fine. Um, and I'm gonna scroll all the way down through all of these activities and I'm gonna go to scholarships and programs. And this is really amazing. Um, you have right here, look at how many options you have to click. Um, and just by clicking, you're opening yourself up for possibly free money. So definitely look through this and read through this. So this is just academic major or interest. You don't even have to major in it, but if you're interested in maybe uh, chemistry, you could add chemistry to this. So scroll through these, they have affiliations. So you can see Ellie was um, involved in organizations that benefited women, so she clicked that. Um, this is just, it's an amazing opportunity for students, so definitely don't um, don't gloss over this. Definitely spend a little bit of time and in every single category, um, click anything that might apply to you because there's a lot of scholarship opportunities out there for you. Okay. For transfer students also. So they also have you clicking if you are looking for educational opportunity program, basically a program to support first generation college students um, that are possibly from low income or educationally disadvantaged backgrounds. That does not apply to Ellie, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, we can see what I selected for scholarships and I'm gonna to continue to personal insight. We're almost done. So you can see here um, in the personal insight questions, they're really looking for, um, sorry, they are really looking to see you. They wanna see your authentic self. There's really no, um, there's no wrong story that you can tell, but 
Um, there are ones that are more and less connected to you. They really want to see you in this application. So make sure that you are um, remaining every single statement that you make in these personal insight questions should be as true to you as it possibly can be. You want to make sure that you're talking about something that demonstrates who you are. And at the end of the day, you want to question, you know, if I didn't know myself and I read this essay, what would I take away about this person? And then see if that aligns with what you want to show about you to the colleges. Okay. I'll so just pipe up real quickly. Um, yeah, also, okay. just we have to wrap up pretty soon, but um, you know, as a former admissions officer for UCLA, I would maybe spend about five minutes on a on an entire application. So when you think about your personal insight essays and what you want to present in terms of your stories to the to the campuses. Um, think about spending at least, somebody asked this in the chat um, or in the Q&A rather, you want to spend at least one to two hours on each essay to really put your entire focus on exactly what it is that you're trying to say in the, those answers. Um, and then you want to revise it. You want to spend a couple more hours, I would say up to three hours on each essay revising and maybe showing a parent or a counselor or somebody else to get their eyes on it so that they can give you their, their take on, on how it reads. Um, and then you want to really polish it and you want to edit it and you want to make sure that it's concise because I can tell you as a reader, you don't have a lot of time to spend on an application. And if the, the essays are written in a way that makes it really confusing or hard to get to the point, then we have to move on. We have to keep reading because there's 110,000 applications um, to UCLA. Uh, so I, I don't know how they get through it, honestly, these days, but I think they have a, an amazing staff and they have a, a system that works. Um, but you need to do your job as an applicant to polish and refine and review and do as much as you can to finish up and present those essays that are going to showcase who you are and do it in a way that is concise and to the point. Absolutely. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I also see another question about test optional. Should you choose, how should you choose if your score is worth so many, if it's above average, if it's above the 75th percentile? I would say in general, keep in mind that your test score um, cannot hurt you in the application process. Um, so I would say that generally, if it shows something above and beyond what your transcript shows, then that's a great opportunity to submit. If it um, is something that the student feels really proud of and like they would like to submit, they worked hard and they got to where they, they are, then that's something to submit. If it is lower than what you would expect based on the transcript or GPA, that would be a time I would say don't submit it. Okay. All right, yay, we're almost done. Um, so here I've got additional space to talk about anything that has um, affected me, but this would be again, a place to explain unusual personal or family circumstances, anything that may be unclear in other parts of the application. So this is not an opportunity to write another essay. This is an opportunity to explain anything that needs explaining that really didn't fit anywhere else. So I, Ellie doesn't have anything like that. So she didn't enter anything. I'm going to hit save and continue. And wow, look at all this work that we've done. So I've got the personal insight questions already entered. Um, it's a lot of work. I mean, that's a full on 1400 words of writing potentially. And I'm going to hit continue to review and submit. Now, this is an opportunity here. If you click print version, you can click print and then you can choose, instead of printing it, you can choose to, to save it as a PDF. So like Jenny was saying, if you would like to send this to somebody, get somebody else's eyes on it, especially in this virtual world, definitely take advantage of this tool and use the print version um, to go ahead and review and submit. Um, but we're done and we've gotten all the way through and you're going to also, and we're going to submit, we're going to submit on November 1st. It's going to be amazing. Um, and we just, um, we want to give you all of the, the good vibes, the good energy to move through this. It is long, but it is not hard. It's just a little bit tedious. 
and it really it they do they really have worked hard to continue developing developing this application to make it as flexible and user friendly as possible. Um, so just know what you're in for. It's going to take you some time, but you absolutely are going to get through it, and then you're going to be able to apply to nine different campuses off of this one um, application. And I'll just take a couple questions now. Um, we did have quite a few questions come in. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, and we'll get through as many as we can. We have a few more minutes if you want to hang on a little bit longer. Um, there was a question that was um, about how many words you can actually write in those personal insight essay questions. Um, the maximum is 350. So you, you don't have to write all the way up to the word count at 350. Um, but you know, anywhere between 200, 250, 300 is just fine. Um, no pressure. And I wouldn't write to the word count. You know, some people sort of think about that and it can become very constricting or very, um, and, and it sort of can get in the way of what it is that you're really trying to say. So my recommendation is to write as much as you can um, offline, not on the application itself yet, but on a Google Doc or a Word Doc or somewhere else. And then you can edit it down multiple times and then see where you are word count wise. And then you can decide how to get, how get, how to get it down. Um, That's great advice. I think Jenny, if you don't mind, yeah. before we go into questions, I see people yeah. are starting to hop off. Okay. Um, I would love to, as we start to do questions, to actually launch another poll so that we can get the feedback now. If you feel like you need to hop off after the poll, fine. Um, but if you don't mind holding on for just a second and giving us some feedback, we want to know how we're doing, want to make sure that we are giving you the information that you need. Um, and so as you vote, we'll just start taking questions. So please just take a moment to um, share your feedback. And I'll just say as a organization that is trying to reach as many people as possible during this time of COVID-19, we want to really encourage you to reach out if you have questions and tell your friends. Um, don't hesitate to share this recording with your friends who might be a little bit stressed out or confused. Um, we are trying to cover as much as we possibly can. This is going to probably take you about three hours um, to fill out the entire application. You can do it in spurts, you know, um, a section at a time. Um, I also want to say a big thank you to Kelsey Terosian, our admissions manager at college, who spent um, an ornament, an ornament amount of time calling through this application, um, creating this for you tonight. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kelsey. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jenny. I just want to help everybody, you know. So I'm really glad we were able to get this out there for everybody. Um, so uh, do you want to take some more questions, Jenny, now? Sure, or? yeah, we can take a couple more. Yeah, okay. if you're... Um, if you're done with the poll, the poll and thank you so much for your feedback. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, so I have an interesting question, Jenny. Um, uh, one of our attendees said that she heard from a college counselor that if you report which APs you're planning on taking on your UC app, but maybe you don't actually take it in the spring, that it could look bad to the um, to the APs um, to the UCs. I'm sorry, say that again. The, um... So um, the question is, if you report planned AP tests in your application, and then for whatever reason, you don't end up taking those AP tests in the spring, does that look bad to the UC system? Well, that won't be information that they'll be able to use to make a decision because that will be after, in fact, after you get your results of admission or denial or wait list. Um, Typically, the admission results come out in March, at the very end of March. Um, April 1 is the final date. And then you have until uh, May 1, you have one month to decide on which campus you're going to attend. Um, and so, no, it would not hurt you at all if you don't end up taking those AP tests. We don't even know if they're going to be offered. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're all, we're all just learning as we go here. So, yeah, great. Thank you. Um, I have a couple questions coming in about the recording. And yes, we will be sending this recording to everybody who has signed up through Eventbrite. Um, and we will also have it on our YouTube channel. Um, so definitely make sure that you follow us on social media, on Facebook and on YouTube. And um, 
yeah, let us know also if there's additional content that you're interested in. We're always looking for free, useful content to generate for everybody. Um, so definitely feel free to reach out to us and let us know, hey, um, all of my friends and I really want to know about blah, blah. And then we will work our best to see if we can accommodate that. And we just want to let you know about, um, we have another session coming up, a webinar coming up for parents and juniors. And stay tuned, you can actually follow us on the, um, what we call our college talks or our live, live with college page. And it will be posted there for your reference. We're also posting it on so our social media channels. So please follow us on social media, but we do want to reach our uh, parents and of juniors. We, we know that there, that is a group you know, juniors are a group that may be struggling um, in a different way, sort of watching your senior friends going through this year um, and not sure about testing, not sure about what to um, what to focus on in terms of activities or summer planning. Um, so we're gonna cover a lot of great useful information for juniors and parents of juniors um, coming up at the end of November. So keep um, keep us, you know, keep, keep checking back and, um, and we hope you will join us for that. And also, um, I've just posted the link to sign up for tickets for that event um, into the chat box just a few seconds ago while Jenny was talking. So if you want to, if you know you want to attend and you want to go um, buy your free tickets, then just <laughs> click right there and it'll take you and you'll have your ticket reserved immediately. We're also going to be bringing back our Live with College sessions in the spring. So for those of you who are parents of younger students, like ninth graders, eighth graders, <laughs> um, or, or 10th graders, uh, you're welcome to, you know, follow us as well and come to our live sessions. We had a huge amount of um, success with these interviews we had, you know, um, and they're all recorded, you can listen to, but uh, the live sessions are a way for you to get current information and better, better updated information on college admissions and um, better access to higher education. Um, by talking and hearing from the admissions officers directly. So we bring them on and we have them on our live sessions. It's a great way to learn more. Um, and this is really the key is to really keep your mind open that there is the best right fit college for your child or for you out there. And that you you are you are essentially in control of this. You have the um, you have the steering wheel if you think about it that way, that you're looking for that best right fit college. For you and there's only one you're only going to go to one college <laughs> so with that i think we're going to sign off um we really appreciate you spending the time with us tonight and we are going to um keep copies of your questions and if you have other individualized questions we really do encourage you to reach out and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible yeah i want to second that and i just want to say you know as a group that is really trying to reach as many families, as many students as we can to provide more information, to provide better access to college. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining us tonight, for sharing this webinar with your friends, either whether you shared it in advance of the webinar or whether you share it after. Um, we just really appreciate the spread of knowledge. Applying is always so much more work so much more work than any student thinks it's going to be when they sit down at the table. Um, so soak up all this great information about the UC application and spread it around. I also want to let anybody watching know that if you feel like you might need more information, even if you just want to talk, the first step, as I said earlier, is just a phone call. It's a free phone call with us where we would be more than happy to talk about your specific circumstances, what to think about, even just that can be hugely helpful because you just can't know what you don't already know. And then if you want more help, cool. If you don't, fine. We just wanna help as many people as we can. This is really a mission of the heart from, for us. So I'm gonna pop the link to reach out to us into the comments box right now. And I wanna encourage you to reach out. Please don't hesitate. We are absolutely here to help. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night. Good night. <laughs>